So, can you believe it? A thousand Ks, four countries, two bold guys, over 32 days. Amazing, hey, Dwayne. It's just been epic for me. It has been amazing. And, you know, when we think that it was almost a year ago that we started to think about it and pray about it, or maybe less, <clears throat> and the way our plans changed and the way we figured that you know we needed to I certainly needed certain training and then to certainly with Dwayne's help to mark the route from Lesotho all the way down to Port St. John's up the coast and then into Mozambique quickly and then into Eswatini. It was just amazing how different the trip was, hey? Different terrains, different times, different people. And so I really would like to, first of all, to thank God, because I think everything good comes from the great creator God. Whether you are a Christian or not, you know God, because God has created us in his image and likeness. And that feeling has been with me, I think, with both of us in our own unique, brilliant ways. But also to thank people like Dwayne, his family, all the sponsors, all of you who have donated, even the little things, even the tent without size. Yeah, somebody donated a tent for me to sleep on the, on the, on the beach. Had no size, the mansion. Hmm. Anyway, it came into some use because we could do our cooking when we got into the camp. Remember that? We kind of were kind of surprised. But there were so many experiences and, you know, it's going to evolve. We've had the experience. It's like, you know, a person has an experience of marriage, but it's the way ahead that makes it incredible. So we've had this experience of walking, doing something that nobody has ever done. You know, this particular route, not the most heroic thing, but for us, an important thing, but it will evolve in time. And for me, what is involved is a closer relationship uh, with the God of my understanding, um, understanding another human being who's very different from me, half my age, but with incredible wisdom and insight, enabling me to have a, a whole new awareness and perspective of young people in this country and understanding that what they are going to experience for the next 30 40 years is going to be so incredible but we've got to do our preparations now and this whole unity walk has been how can we unite all the goodness because there's been there's so much more goodness in the world i think for you and i we've seen those little acts taxi drivers giving us money things like that and it's been yeah it's been awesome and to be able to finish with a great man like you and to feel um, that there's so much more in life than I imagined possible. Anyway, enough from me. What about you, Dwayne? How was your experience? Yeah, I th thank you so much, everybody. Everybody watching this, um, I'm sure you've had a part or you've supported us in one way or another. And the support from everyone um, is so appreciated by us. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. And there will be more to come, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we both thoroughly enjoyed it, you know, uh, if you look at the physical component about it, it was uh, a year of specific training and rehabilitation for Stephen to get him to the point where I felt that he would be able to manage um, such an adventure. Uh, the physical challenge can't be understated or underrated. I mean, it's a thousand and forty odd kilometers in 32 days. Uh, we didn't take one day off. We, uh, we walked every day in through whatever weather was posed to us. Uh, mm -hmm. We had minus five degrees at the top of the first, um, on the first day we climbed the highest mountain in Southern Africa. I mean, my pipe, my water pipe was frozen at the top. We had two hailstorms we walked through that day. And our first day was 12 hours of walking um, uh, through wet conditions. So we had blisters pretty much from day one. Well, Stephen had blisters from day one till he still got blisters today. Um, you know, so that's just like also showing it wasn't easy. Uh, we had to wake up every day, nurse our bodies, nurse the pain, um, and you're constantly trying to stay on top of reducing inflammation throughout the body. So there were physical lessons and lessons ab about your body that you can relate and translate into life. 
you know it's like if you look after your body you can still go and perform the next day yeah. and it's all about those management tools the communication to that we had to have continuously the whole way through checking each other's hydration checking each other's nutrition checking the sleep levels how are you feeling you know um, just in terms of general fatigue and managing that to get us uh, right to the end and I mean today is the day after and I feel pretty good you know I know you feel pretty good we've had the discussion so it's not like we completely broke ourselves um, I'm not saying it wasn't tough and it, it, we didn't have to dig deep or you know use all the mental tricks that we've learned um, both of us are, have, are keen meditators and we can meditate while we walk which um, definitely helped me and I, uh, Absolutely. I think it was a big Absolutely. part of both of our journeys um, so if, you know I just touched on the first day it's like walking down Sani Pass walking through Oroby Gorge walking the train tracks all the way from Port Shepston to the bluff going from the bluff underwater through the tunnel to Durban um, I walk in some magical beaches from Durban to Mtanzini and then from Mtanzini we realized we were a day behind and we had to run three marathons consecutively and we actually did more than a marathon distance every day for three days yeah uh, most of it uh, slow running but running and that was like day 15 16 17 so like halfway into yeah, our journey yeah. and we had caught up a day by the time we hit the coast of St Lucia um, and that was the toughest but the most beautiful section for sure because we were on the beach with big bags I mean the bags were around 30 to 40 kgs because we had to carry a lot of water um, think about it we were uh, on the beach for five days yeah. for five days walking on the beach with our own food our own water sleeping on tents in the dunes and, and um, eating like kings so yeah, we had good food we still ate very well um, Dwayne's the master chef <laughs> And yeah, I mean, that that was really, really, really special for us. Um, but the whole thing, you know, from leaving Mozambique and, and journeying up into Swaziland, you see such rural parts of the country. Um, I mean, I'll, if you look at some of the footage, you won't believe what some of the people still live on, especially closer towards Lesotho, uh, Swaziland. It was really obvious to us that these guys aren't working for a living yeah. you know it's all they rely on completely on self-sustainable farming um, and basic trade so I mean the internet cafe there is just like a, a shack put together and it, it, it mm. has like a painted internet cafe so it's, it's places like that where I think we can do a whole lot of good mm. and you know starting from the people that need it the most and working up from there is something that I feel very passionate about and I think um, that's the way we can help the world evolve consciously is to get people mm -hmm. out of survival Absolutely. mode by allowing them um, teaching them educating them on how to be completely self-sustainable so they're not relying on anybody whether it's for energy sources or food sources or medical whatever it may be you know you really want to empower the individual so there, there's lots of hard work for us um, but fun work, I mean, it's uh, very rewarding. And I think that's, that's the biggest sort of positive out of this is that it can reaffirms what we're doing needs to be done. Yeah. So yeah, I'm truly grateful for the experience and yeah, excited for more fu future experiences to come. Yeah, when I, when I went to the doctor today, just to make sure that my blisters were all okay. And he said, no, you've done everything perfectly well. So thanks for all the advice. And um, it's just a matter of skin healing you know, that happens every day. But he said to me, what's your next adventure? <laughs> so, and we spoke about that. And so we don't know, we've got lots of ideas. And as, as we were walking, we had lots of ideas about gyms for Africa and Nature Center for healing. And you know, one of the, the great things I, 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 I learned again is that the simple people give you simple messages of encouragement you remember the the taxi driver who gave us 50 rand mm. i remember the man who who drove past and pulled back and gave us some oranges and, and a little liquid fruit orange mm. i remember the lady in the rain who was going to cause chaos she just stopped in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and you were shouting that get off the road get off the road and all she wanted to do was to to hand us a little bit of money to say I, you know i've seen you this morning I see you now, you walk in the rain, it was pouring with rain. Mm. And she just 
without even thinking of her own safety really she was just overwhelmed what these guys were doing and i think for, for both of us we we feel that our charities are little but they can do so much and we can only do it with all of you with every single one there's more good in this world um, than bad we focus on the bad and the corruption all the rest of it uh, haven't we had enough of that let's just let's leave that just let somebody else talk about it but for me let's do the walk with our heart you know if we can do that on our walk you won't give us time to do something incredible Imagine how much more all of us can do if we walk in this path of sharing what we've got, our knowledge, our love, our respect. Um, and it's not a financial thing, it's a, it's a humanity thing. So for me, yeah, epic. It's going to grow because that's what God does. And what an amazing person to do it with. Um, I'm quite well aware that... Um, there were times when Dwayne was carrying more in his pack than mine, out of respect for me. I know when Donovan joined us, he was also right in there. And there were certainly times when I, I, I wanted to give up. But Dwayne's presence and Dwayne's belief, as I think we need to have in each other, helps us go that little step extra that makes the difference in all of our lives. So thank you, Dwayne. It's a pleasure. I think that uh, point you mentioned, I just wanted to say as well for us, you know, not seeing the media, not seeing the news, not feeling um, what most people are feeling here, which um, again, it's that fight or flight survival mode type thing. We've got no water, no electricity and, you know, so many hearing about so much negative news. Yeah. You know, we never had that for 32 days and I, I mean, I feel amazing. I'm sure you do too. And there's something in our brains that's called the reticular activating system. And basically how that works is things that you focus on, you see more of in life. And I think that's a really good message for us. It's like, we don't have to tap into the news. We don't have to tap into the negativity. Like life's exactly yeah. the same for us right now. I, I'm not saying be negligent and don't go on there, but don't be fixated on making it like your life. It's something that's happening there. And and I think we need to choose what we want to focus on. And if you start focusing on all the good, positive, happy things, are you going to receive more of that in life for sure? Yeah, and that's a good Christian message. It's not just a, a great stoic um, focus, you know. Go to any religion. If you keep it on the positive, keep it on the love, then things happen. Um, the craziness of the world will happen, but the, the goodness is far more superior. And we saw that. I think for me, major um, in the moonlight walking. That was because special. That was really incredible because. Yeah, it was so to put you yeah. in the picture um, on the beach, walking in the middle of the day is just way too hot, and you got to carry a limited amount of water. Otherwise, you know you're not going to make it the next day. Mm. So we walked the early mornings, the mid afternoons. We took a break unless it was overcast, and we walked through the day, um, and then we got the specifically we had timed it for the full moon so we could walk Imagine. through the full moon without having our lights on keep our batteries and that saved and uh, yeah it was very very special just doing that by moonlight yeah i just enjoyed the way the, the sea was flapping we were on the edge where the, the soil the the sand was firmer so there'll be no spring low at the time we were walking as well so it was nice and flat yeah. and just ideal walking yeah. conditions and also, you know, for, I, I don't know, if, well, you obviously know that for most of the time, if you think of, I mean, how I many hundreds of, hundreds of hours we walked, we walked in silence. Mm. And that's meditation. Mm. You, know, you don't have to be sitting on a pole with your legs crossed for meditation, but that methodical walking, looking, being in creation. And even just the energy that we were in, so say for example you inside your work environment and you're around computer screens and tvs and cell phones yeah. and other different appliances and all that frantic energy you know our energy was mountains ocean bush you sand. Know, sand and you, you're grounding yourself every day with nature um so yeah, yeah it's difficult not to be infected by the positivity of the yeah. of the world you know of the planet i think we also I think we both expressed it that 
<clears throat> this was a major blessing that very few people have the blessing of 30 days away. You mm. know, your wife and your family and your your business um, acumen enabled you to do that. And I had my annual leave, uh, etc., like that. But it is something that not many people have. So, you know, in future planning, we're thinking that we'd like to do this with a lot more people, but maybe shorter things for families even. I know you, Duane, you're talking a lot about um, those adventures for families. That, um, well, that's something prepared. that we, we're running on imfgym.com. So it's like retreats, and that's retreats for anybody, you know. So we can organize to go sleep up in the mountains in a cave for a night or two, go do a beach trip, a beach excursion. Uh, whether it's leadership courses for teenagers or whether it's um, team building for companies, religious you know, groups whatever there's yeah. a lot there's a lot of um interesting little activities we can yeah. put together there and that's from a business front obviously but for the charity yeah i mean there's lots of ideas that we can chat about we've got yeah. you know some time to think now yeah. and i'm sure we'll come up with something really exciting for the future uh, i think another thing um that that we we harped on quite a lot was the the financial responsibilities we have and the spiritual fun, uh, spiritual responsibilities. And so often we don't get that balance right. And I think certainly for, for you, Dwayne, I noticed that you were doing a lot of thinking about that kind of balance. It's kind of easier for me, but I'm aware that many people in the parish have got this great um, concern of being financially responsible and being religiously or spiritually, not religiously, there's another, but spiritually responsible. Because when that synergy comes together, that's what I believe great creator wants us, to be responsible for what we have. And so we grow in mind and soul and body. You know. I think uh, the only way for me is that when you're thinking about your financial means or your occupation, it's got to be that. It's got to be well thought out and it's got to be mindful got to be mindful that what you're doing is beneficial for the planet humanity and everything on it yeah. you know it can't be destructive to nature it can't be you know cutting down our forests we've got to be thinking about what yeah. we're doing so i think being mindful about the way we earn money uh, if everybody did that yeah then that's a slightly better uh, spiritual practice because there's some consideration and yeah. you know there's some foresight we're thinking about the generations to come yeah and not just negligently taking as much as we can for today and but did you notice how often you said when we saw somebody doing that yeah. you said but anybody would do what they're doing because they have to sustain themselves yeah and i think both of what we're trying to do with our mm. various projects is to find a way where we are being responsible for creation yeah but create economic possibilities for people not like you know this thing from health to wealth but in a responsible way and i think that's been something that was quite um consistent right throughout yes there is destruction going on here but i would do the same if i had no money mm. so how can we change that as a humanity and i yeah. think that was an important statement that you made there. and that's that's something that's gonna take some time and work I think a lot of people have to change but I think the changes are coming and I think that's why all this turmoil in the world is coming from at the moment is normally when there's change and you hit like a juncture then you get this sort of ruffling up you know yeah so hopefully um, well I feel that we are going to be changing for the better yeah so maybe that's just my positive brain but right you know fantastic and I think, you know, this is not the end. Uh, the, the walk, yeah, it comes to an end as one phase finishes, the next starts. But I'm hoping um, that this manifests itself in other ways, bigger ways for more people. Mm. So that uh, what we felt can be felt by everyone because it's such an important feeling and sense of being. So I think it's empowering also taking time out to be by yourself. Um, I think not a lot of people do that enough and I would strongly encourage it like time out all alone you know I, we mentioned you get it quite a bit but no, it's not normal it's not a regular yeah. person does not go and spend time on their own days on days yeah. and days out you know so that's a good lesson as well yeah. 
But you know, we can start small, eh? Even if you drive in your car and you get to a car park, before you get out, just spend one minute with your eyes closed. Mm. You go in Belito, we are so incredibly blessed. Nobody can say they can't go to the beach and look at the sea for five minutes. Watch the sunrise? Watch the sun, oh yeah. He's good on sunrise meditations and that's something I learned. Eh? Um, it's something, you know, if I can just share. We must always remember the sun is such an important source of energy for our world. But when you look at the sun, the, or even the moon, that reflects the sun, and you see the rays on the sea, they come directly to you, wherever you look. And that's the connection between the divine source. For me, that's, it becomes such a, an incredible small, wherever you go, wherever you are, that is your line to the direct source of divinity of energy, of the source of power. So when you get depressed and when you get out of sorts and you don't know what's going on, well, that's just normal. Go and find a sunset, get your connection and know you there. There's a source and power that is beyond you, anything that we know. So good. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate your support. Without you, it couldn't have happened, huh? Without the parishioners giving us operational costs, um, I don't want to name everybody, you probably won't remember them. Gary wore those shoes and the clothes, you wore those clothes every single day. Mm. Um, the socks, um, all the, the collagen, the protein, and all the rest, the tin. The biltong, um, yeah, just incredible stuff. Thanks, guys, you're amazing. Let our blessing be yours.